All right, so in this video, we are going to be going through the following problem of how to merge two sorted singly linked lists. And we're going to go through the process of how to go about doing this first, and then we're actually going to go and code this up in Python to see how we can uh, turn this into code. So let me just step through what I mean by merging two sorted lists. Let's assume that we have two different singly linked lists like the ones that were given here on this slide. So we have one li list which has the data elements 1, 5, 7, 9, 10. Note it's sorted. And then we also have another list which is the second one which also has sorted elements 2, 3, 4, 6, and 8. And so what we want to do is we want to take both of these lists and wind up with a list that has both of these merged. So this is the resulting desired resulting list at the end of it. It's a singly linked list where all of the elements are still sorted and it's all merged into one list. That's what we're going for. So I would encourage you to pause the video, go ahead and try to code this up using the linked list class that we have in Python. Maybe try and get a pen and paper and try to work it out first. If you have trouble or if you get stuck, go ahead and unpause the video and we can work through it together. So I'm going to go through the process of how we can go about uh, solving this problem. So what we're going to do is we're going to make use of three different pointers. So there's these two pointers, P and Q. These will initially point to the head of the respective lists. So P will initially point to the head of the first list, and Q will point to the head of the second list. Now we also have this S pointer here. This S pointer is going to follow us along in this uh, algorithm and is going to keep track of the lesser value. And as we move it along, it will eventually um, give us the sorted list. So let's actually see how this process works. So what we want to do first is we want to do the following thing. This is just kind of the precursor step. We want to figure out, okay, let's start off. Let's start off here even. P is pointed to this head, Q is pointing to this head, and we're going to ask which node has the lesser value. So which node node's data element has the value which is lesser, P or Q? So in this instance, P has the value that is lesser than Q, since 1 is less than 2. And so what we do in that instance is we set S to point to the node with the lesser value. This is just kind of a precursor step before we actually get started in the main part of the algorithm. So S is now pointing to this head as is P, Q is still pointing to this node down here. And then what we do is we, um, we're going to move P over here. The reason for that is because S is going to keep track of the lesser element, and then the next thing that S points to must be either P or Q. So basically, S is always going to follow this, this along. You can think of S kind of trailing back behind as we move P and Q throughout the list. S is going to kind of follow along, and it needs to kind of be behind P and Q. So what we're going to do is S.next must be P. So we'll move P over here. So now we have S on this node, P over here pointing to this node with 5, and then Q over here with 2. And now we're, we're going to kind of start the core of the algorithm. And the way that we do that is now that we have this set up, we compare the data elements stored at nodes pointed to by P and Q, and we ask which of the two nodes have the lesser data value. So in this case, the lesser data value is found at the node pointed to by Q, because 2 is less than 5. And so what we do is we update the next pointer of S. So before S is pointing to this one here, we check which one P or Q has the lesser value. Since this one has the lesser value, S.next now points to Q. So the arrow is now changed orientation and is also in red. So when I either change the orientation or process the arrow more generally, I will change the color to denote that uh, change because sometimes the orientation may stay the same. Uh, but to denote that we've processed that, that arrow, that pointer, I'll denote it in red. So now the next pointer of S is pointing to the lesser of the values between P and Q. And what we do now is we move S since we've uh, processed that, we move it to the lesser value. So S is now going to go down here to 2, since that was the lesser value between P and Q. And Q is going to uh, be the next uh, node with respect to S here. So S is here, and the next one, again, S is kind of following along for the ride. It's going to be right behind Q in this case. Okay, so now we do the same thing. We do another comparison. We check between P and Q which node data element has the lesser value. So in this case, Q uh, has a lesser value between P and Q, 3 is less than 5, and what we do there is we say, okay, 
update the next pointer of s to point to the lesser of the two values, in that case q. Notice that the arrow just changed from gray to red because the orientation stayed the same, but we have processed that arrow. And then what we do is we update the s and uh, q pointer in this case because the lesser of the two between p and q is three. So s now moves over where q was and q moves ahead to the next node. So we do something like this where s is pointing to the node with three, q is pointing to the node with four right after s. So now we, again, we do another comparison between P and Q. We ask which data element has the lesser value. So in this case, Q does again. So what we do is we say, okay, the next node of this one where S lives, that will point to the lesser value in this case to Q. So again, the orientation does not change, but we're going to highlight the arrow in red to denote that we've processed that edge. And then we update the pointers. So S moves along to the lesser of the two values between P and Q. So it'll be right here. And then Q needs to move ahead. So we'll have something like this. Okay, so now we have another comparison. P and Q, this time P is lesser than Q since 5 is less than 6. So what we do there is we update the next pointer of the node that S is on to point to the lesser value, which in this case is the node that has data five. So we'll update the arrow to point there. Also highlight it in red to indicate that it's processed. And then notice that I, I kind of did two things in one slide. Not only did I change the orientation of the arrow, but I also updated S to go to the, to point to the node with the lesser of the two values. So S is gonna go there. And again, P needs to go in front of it. So S dot next, the node there will be P in this case. Okay, so again, another comparison between P and Q. 6 is less than 7, so S is going to move back down here. Q is going to go one node ahead, and we're going to take S dot next here, not to point to 7, but to 6. So again, I've kind of all done that on one slide. We go from 5 to 6, and we update S to uh, be the lesser of the two values, 6 between 7. So S is here, and then S dot next is Q. So moving right along, we have another comparison between P and Q. So in this case, P is the lesser value between Q. So we orient this thing to point to the lesser of the two, which is here. And then we also update S, which was previously here, to be over here. S dot next is P. And we move along. Another comparison between P and Q, 8 is less than 9. So what we do is we update the arrow let me just go back. We update that arrow over there to point to the lesser of the two nodes. And then we move this right along here. So now Q is pointing to the null, uh, the null node. So there's nothing left in this list to process. And basically at that point, since there's nothing left here to process, and we know that these two lists are sorted, we can go ahead and just essentially point back over to this list over here and then fill in the arrows with red because we know that since there's no other nodes left down here at the bottom, the remaining part of the sorted nodes will be up here. So we'll just point back up there and the rest of the uh, list should be in the proper order. And at the end of that, we will have, if we follow the arrows, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, null. And so we've got that sorted out. So that's the general approach for how we're going to solve the problem. Uh, it's one thing to understand how this works. It's another thing to code it up. So now we're going to go ahead and try to code up this implementation in Python using our linked list class that we have uh, coded up in previous videos. Okay, so we're in the code now, and we're going to go ahead and try to code up what we just described for merging two sorted linked lists. So I've already gone ahead and defined a prototype function, which I've called merge sorted, which will be part of the linked list class. So the sorted lists that we'll um, be dealing with is the list that the class defines and also a list that we'll pass in as a parameter as well as self. I've gone ahead and created two linked list objects, one and two. And then for one, I've gone ahead and appended the same numbers that were in the example list of the slides that we went over and then the same thing for the second list all of those elements there were the elements that we considered for the example of the second list as well so now let's go ahead and try to code this up so let's kind of go back and forth between the slides so we kind of remember what we uh, are doing so let me open this back up let me go back up to the top here so we have these two lists. Let's actually go down to this one here. And we have our three pointers, so P, Q, and S. So P 
P and Q, remember, are going to initially point to the heads of the respective lists. So we'll go ahead and do that first. So let's define P is equal to self.head. Again, this is the uh, first list, and then Q is going to be a pointer to the head of the second list, which in this case will be the list that is passed in as a parameter. So it'll be equal to list.head. And so now what we're going to do is we're just going to uh, check a few things to make sure that we're not given any empty lists. So one thing we can check is if if p is null. So if not p, basically if the whole list is just null, then what happens in that case? Let's go back to the figure. If p doesn't exist, then what makes sense to return would just be q, because there's no nodes in p in this case, and we already know that q is in sorted order. So in the case that p is null, in the case that p is actually not uh, is a list that doesn't have any actual, actual nodes in it, we'll just return the other list. And the same thing could be said for, for Q and P as well. So for instance, if we check and Q is null, then, well, we'll return P instead. So let's go ahead and do that. These are just kind of some uh, initial checks that we'll add into our code. So if not P, then we'll return Q. And if not Q, we'll return P. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to check whether or not um, P and Q are null. So we're going to say if p or sorry uh yeah we're going to check if p and q are not none so if they're not none then we're going to uh, set up p q and s in the initial way that we did so remember we have this set up here and what we're going to want to do at first anyway is we're going to check okay uh, which of these two nodes which of the two heads of the two lists that we have which of them is lesser uh, in this case the node that was lesser was the one that held one so that was where if we move up here, that's where S initially got pointed to. So S is pointing to the node between P and Q, between the head nodes that had the lesser value. So if that's the case, we'll put S over there, and otherwise we'll put uh, S over here if that was the opposite case. And then also, since this is the node with the uh, least value in this case, we're going to want to make sure to say, okay, this is also the head of the list because we're again, we're kind of constructively going through and making this whole list. And at the end of it, we have this, uh, you know, this merged list that has all of the elements in it. So we want to make sure that we define the first lowest element in this case as the head of the list. So let's go back up to that image over here. So we have this, we want to make sure that S is, is pointing to the node with the lesser element between P and Q when P and Q are the head nodes. And then also we want to make sure that this node is now the head of the list. So we can do that. So if P and Q, and then we're going to check if uh, P dot data is less than or equal to Q dot data, then what we're going to do is we're going to say, uh, well, I guess before I do this, I also want to make sure that I have the S pointer, which I'll initially set to just none because I want to use that here. So if if the data at P is less than or equal to the data at Q, which is exactly what we have in the figure, we want to say, okay, S is equal to P. And then we also want to update uh, the next pointer of this. So we want to say that the P dot next is equal to, or sorry, we want to say P is equal to uh, S dot next. So why do we want to do that? Let's take a look at the figure again. So if P is less than Q, it is in this case, we want to say, okay, now S is equal to P, right? Because S is pointing to this node over here. And then we want to say that P is equal to S dot next. Why do we want to say that? Well, because P is always, Q or P are always going to be in front of S. S is kind of following behind. So that is this step here. We want to say, okay, now that we have S set as the lesser node, make P be in front of it, or essentially make the dot next pointer point to the next node in this list here. So that's what this is doing. And we're going to do kind of a mirror thing if the other case. So otherwise, if the uh, data at Q is less than or equal to the data at P, which we can just fill with an else here, we'll say S is equal to Q, and then Q is equal to S dot next. Same principle there, only it's in the other list. So that's going to get us started, and we're also going to, as I mentioned, want to update the head of the list. So we'll call this, let's say, new head is equal to S. And that is, again, that's because whether P or Q is lesser initially, whether the heads of these two lists, whichever one is the least, which in this case is this one here, this one will now be the new head of the list that we're constructing.
Okay, so I'm going to get rid of that extra new line, and then let's go through the core of the algorithm. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the two lists, and we're going to move P and Q along, and we're going to have S come along for the ride. So we're going to say while P and Q, we're going to do kind of a similar thing. We're going to check the data held at P and Q. So we'll have one for if P dot data is less than or equal to Q dot data, we'll do something, and then otherwise we'll do something else as well. So let's go ahead and figure out what that is. So if p dot data is less than or equal to q dot data, what do we do? Well, let's go back to the figure here. Let's assume that we're in this case here, right? So s is here, p is here, q is here. And what we want to do is we want to check, is the data at the node pointed to by p, is that data element less than or equal to q? So in this case, it's not the case, we have the opposite case. So we have this else condition where actually the data at Q is less than or equal to the data at P. So in that case, what we wanna do is we want to update a few things. We want to update the next pointer of S. So S.next will point to the lesser of the two things. So that's this one in this case. And then we also want to move S to the least element, which in this case is this guy, and also move Q in front of it. So we'll update S to be pointing to the next element that was the least between P and Q, and then S dot next should be this guy over here. So let's go ahead and fill in the else case. It's gonna be a very similar thing for the if condition. Uh, so basically here, what we're going to do is we're going to say S dot next is equal to uh, Q. So again, that was exactly what we did here. S dot next is equal to Q. Then what we do is we say S is equal to Q, and then uh, P is equal to, or sorry, um, S is equal to Q, and then Q is equal to S dot next. So that Q is equal to S dot next is because this is where Q is, so Q is equal to the next node of S. So S is here, the next node is this one right here, that's where Q should be, and that's what we have there. So very similar thing for this guy right here, we're just going to say uh, S dot next is equal to P, and then we're going to say s is equal to p, and then p is equal to s dot next. So same principle there, only just um, kind of a, a flip, kind of a mirror image of what happens. So the next part is just after we exit out of the loop. So basically, if we exit out of the loop, one of the two things will uh, be true, either p or q will be null. So basically, if not p, we'll do something, and then if not q, we'll do something else. So what are we gonna do in the case where it's not P or Q? Well, what is that case? So if we get to this point here where we've gone through and now Q is uh, null, then basically what we wanna do is we wanna say S.next is equal to P. So we wanna say the next element of this guy over here should be P because basically we're at the null element here, we're at the end of the list, and the rest of the elements here are going to be the remaining components, the remaining nodes of P. And if it was the other case, if it was P uh, was on the other side, it would be the same type of logic there. So basically, in this case, if not P, we'll say s.next is equal to Q, and then if not Q, same sort of idea, s.next is equal to P. And then what we'll do at the final part of this is we'll just return the new head of the list. So we'll say return new head. And now let's go ahead and run this code that we have down here. So this, again, we've defined these two list objects and we've filled them up to be similar to the example that we've been going through. So I'm gonna go ahead and merge the two lists and then print out the result. And actually, before I do that, let's just go ahead and print out um, list one and list two. So we'll say list one, print list, list two dot print list, and I'm just gonna add a new line here so we can kind of see what these lists look like initially. So let's go ahead and say python linked list.py. Okay, so that seems to do the trick. So basically I just indented that return statement and I'm printing out the two lists. So if I do that, just do that again, I have the first list, 157910, and the second list, 23468. So let's go ahead and remove the print statements here. And I will move that back. So I'm just gonna print out the first list, and I'm going to say, uh, go ahead and merge the first list for me with respect to the second list, and then print that 
that content out, print the merged list out for me. So save that and go ahead and run it. So what we see here is we see the merge list, which appears to have worked properly. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So that seems to have worked as expected. So that's pretty much it for this video. Um, if you if you liked it, if you enjoyed it, please let me know in the comments if there's any. Uh, criticisms or anything like that. Again, I'm happy to hear them, happy to try to improve the quality and content of these videos. Uh, thank you again for taking the time to watch, and until next time, bye-bye.